Hey guys, this is Mark and this is a video about making an inventory system in Unreal Engine that can count the number of a given thing, like the number of like carrots you have or whatever. Um, and so I'm going to dive right into it. I'm going to move kind of fast and pause if you need um, to take a look at what I'm doing. I'll try and explain. So first I'm going to make the loot. Uh, so I'm going to make an actor type and I'm going to make this in the content folder. I'm going to call this generic loot. Now what I like to do is make all of my loot to have the uh, to come from the same actor. So like this one type of actor, generic loot, will be most all the loot in my game. And so what I'm going to do is first give it a type of loot string. Okay. And it also needs to have some shape, so I'm going to give it a static mesh. So I click Add Component, Static Mesh. And we're going to just leave that as static mesh. Good. Compile and save. And now what we want is for this to change shape uh, for so that we can like set the shape of this in the editor or from some other... Um, like When it's created, we can set what shape it is. Um, just because of the... the simple way that I'm doing this. So we're going to go to our construction script so that whenever this is constructed it's going to take this static mesh and just type in set mesh and it'll give you two options. It's the bottom one here. Set static mesh. Plug that in. And so it's looking for an input now and so just drag that off and promote to variable. Okay so we're going to name this variable unique loot shape. Okay, very good. And the important thing with this is that we click instance editable and let's do expose on spawn too so that when we put it in the editor we can set the properties of this variable or if we create it from some other blueprint we can set the properties then as well. And then we're going to go to type of loot this variable here and we're going to do the same thing. Let's make it instance editable and just in case it was a bigger project. Expose on spawn would probably be a good idea, but it's not a big deal. So then uh, w when we drag some generic loot into the world, it'll have no shape. It has the scene component there, but that's not a shape. So if I were to play, I wouldn't see it. It's not. I don't see it anywhere. Okay. So um, I don't know if I said this, but I've done nothing in this project previous to uh, f since this video started. So it's all from scratch. And we're going to get this done pretty fast, I think. So we've got the generic loot in the world now, but we can set some properties that we let ourselves set. So we can set what the type of loot is and what the shape is. So we're going to set this to a cube. Okay. And I'm going to drag this out. And I'm holding Alt right now to create copies. And this one I'm going to set to a sphere. And this one I'm going to set to a cone. Okay. I'm going to delete that one. So we've got three different versions of the same type of uh, actor. And so there'd be three different types of loot. So this one, I'm going to set the type of loot string as basketball. Okay. This one, I'm going to set the type of loot string to, um, I don't know, what would a cone like that be? Um, we'll call it a stellar converter. It's perfect. I think I spelled converter wrong. And this one will be a Borg cube. Okay, so that's the type of loot that it is. And now I'm going to drag it around and make some more of these guys. Okay, and you could you could spawn these from blueprints too. Just when you spawn them, make sure you set the values of the name and of the shape. Um, and in a lot of cases that's all you need okay good so we got a lot of loot laying around now what I want to do is I need to go into my player character I think it'll be in this project yeah they keep it here so this is like all the movement stuff that comes with it and I don't want to see all that so I'm gonna make a new event graph by clicking there and we're gonna call this looting alright so I'm gonna have keyboard F as my loot button 
um, because I've been playing a lot of PUBG. And when I press F, we're going to do a line trace for objects. Boom. And um, let's just fill in these pins. I think the best way to start this, I'm not going to tell you this is the best way to do a line trace, but um, this is uh, the way that I remember to do it offhand. So get the first person camera, get its world location, and you'll start the line trace there. And then we need the forward vector, and then we need to multiply that by our distance. So multiply by float, vector times float. So this is the distance that it's going to trace right here, this little green float. Uh, I think 3,000 should be like more than far enough. The object type is going to be important, so I'm going to drag that off and type out make, and that'll bring up make array. Um, so what types of objects are we tracing for? We could just do all of them by adding a bunch of pins, but I don't think that's a good idea. So I'm going to uh, just do the one perfect type that we want. So I'm going to go to the generic loot, and I'm going to look at the mesh and see what collision it has on. So it is a world dynamic object type by default. That's what it was default as. So we're going to trace for world dynamic objects. Um, Trace complex, no actors to ignore. As long as we're ignoring self, that's good. And now this is going to produce a hit out hit structure, so we're going to break that. Just type in break hit result. And now what we want to do is, well, we know we want to destroy the actor in the world. Okay, um, so that's one thing we're definitely going to do. So this is the hit actor node right there. Um, but before we destroy it, we want to pull out what name it had. What was its name? Um, and so in order to do that, we need to uh, do a few things. Um, first, we need to cast to generic loot. In other words, we need to assume that this hit actor was of gen the generic loot type. So I'm going to type cast to generic loot. Boom. Convert this to pure cast. Okay. And now, what do I need to do with this generic loot? Well, I need to find out what the type was. Okay, remember this variable we made, type of loot? So I'm going to get, what's the value of the variable type of loot? Perfect. Now I need to add this into my inventory. And I could just keep this execution chain going forever, but I think it's a good idea now to create a new event that will do all of that work for us um, down below. And we're going to call this add in an item. Um, yeah, that's good enough. And this event will need to take in... Uh, this string okay so we're gonna we're gonna have an input string okay so just name of incoming perfect so here we're going to do add an item obviously we don't want to add an item after we've destroyed it because then it won't have any properties right so uh, I think that's going to be a, yeah. So because I renamed this node right here, it's going to give me an error here because I didn't compile. So it's just a dumb thing that happens. So if I do this again, add an item, get the same node, but it's refreshed and it knows what it's doing. So, um, and then plug in the type of loot. So it's going to send that to this uh, event. Okay. So to summarize what we've done so far, if I press F, I'm going to line trace out. Um, and if I hit something, assume it's of the type generic loot. Um, if it's not, then none of this will really happen, I don't think. Uh, actually, we yeah, we do need to make sure that we, uh, we care if this succeeds. Otherwise, we'll destroy actors that are not generic loot. Okay. So if it succeeds in casting to generic loot then we will send an item into this event and then destroy the actor to signify that it's no longer in the world because it's in our inventory alright so then what are we going to do with this little guy this is where some of the real more complex work starts um, and in order to make this work we're going to need uh, an array of structs and this is like Anytime you're making an inventory, you're pretty much always going to want an array of structs. So, 
Um, we're going to go out to the content and make, go to blueprints. I'm right clicking here. Go to blueprints and we're going to make a structure. All right, and this will be called item info, info. Perfect, whatever. Okay. So this will be the actual item in your inventory. And it needs to have a name and it needs to have a count. This is this is the, the juicy part right here. The count will be an integer and the name will be a string. Okay. So then there's going to be a giant list of these in your inventory. It's an array of structs. A list of these. It's the same thing. Uh, so now that my project knows what an item info struct is, I can create a variable here. Uh, we're going to call this inventory. Very simple. Your inventory should usually be, in my opinion, an array of structs. So look for item info. All right, it'll be of the item info type, and it will be an array. It seems complicated, I guess, at first, but it's not. Um, so then we need to check and see does this array already have uh, does my inventory already have an item uh, of the same type and if it does then we need to just increase the count by one that's all we'll have to do okay so it's kind of a lengthy process um, and there's some good reasons why you would use a variable map instead of a variable array in some cases a map is there but an array is more powerful so if you know how to use the array it's just better like it's good don't worry about it so what we need to do is check to see do I already have an item do I already have items in my inventory of this type and if I do um, then just add to the count so we're gonna break this right and that'll give me name and count we need to see if this equals the name so does the item that I'm adding equal the the name of the item in my inventory. So f the better way of saying that is for each item in my inventory, does it equal the name of the new one? And if it does, what are we going to do? Okay, so if it does equal uh, something already in my inventory, then we're just going to add to the count. So it will just be set array element coming out here. The element will be or the index will be the index so we're at this index okay the count will be actually we need to this is the this is the item here so we need to make this right make and break for structs so the count will be the count plus one we're adding one item into our inventory and the name will be the same so whatever it was before it'll just stay the same All right, so all of that, what it did is it added one item to a stack, okay? But we need to know if that succeeded. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for this, I'm going to make a variable called item was added to stack, okay? It's kind of wordy, but it helps me to remember helps you to remember. And I'm going to set this to true. Okay? Set to true. Perfect. So in order for that variable to make sense, it's got to be zeroed out every time we use this function or this this uh, event sequence. So in the very beginning, before we do anything, I'm going to set it to false. So before we start, set it to false. If we find something, if we find a stack to add it to, set it to true. Then when all of this is completed, if when, once it's ran through everything in your inventory, then drag down here. All right. And if item was added to stack is still false, the item was not added to the stack, that means we need to create a new uh, entry into this array, the inventory array, which is actually the easiest thing to do. Just add... Um, will make an item info struct. The name will be the incoming name and the count will be one. All right? Because we just made one of these things or we pick we put one of these into our inventory. Uh, and this should actually drop this should drag off a of false. Okay, not true. Items added to stack is still false. Then 
add new item. So I'm going to comment that add new item stack into inventory. All right. And so I'm going to comment this. Line trace for new loot. Yeah, that would be good enough. All right, clean this up. You get the idea. And now, um, last but not least, I want a way to display this. So I'm going to do a quick little testing thing. Uh, we're going to do event keyboard 5. So when I press 5, it's going to... I'm going to drag out my inventory. I'm going to do a for each loop. All right, real simple. So for every item in my inventory, I'm going to... Um, I need to break this and then I'm going to print string. Now in order to make this nice to look at we need to append string and then add a pin and then so we'll have the name and then we'll have a space, a colon, and a space and then we'll have the count converted from an integer. I think that'll be everything we need. Alright, and when I have a testing thing, I like to set it to the color orange so I know to delete it later. And I think our whole project is done. So, when I press F, it should line trace to this. Destroy it. Go to the add an item in, uh, event. Check to see in my inventory if I already have something of this type. If I do, add one to the count. If I don't, create a new item. So if I press 5 right now, it, for every item in my inventory, it prints a string. There's no items in my inventory. It doesn't print any strings. All right, so I'm going to press F, pick that up. F, pick that up. Press 5, stellar converters, I have 2. All right, so it seems to be working. Press 5, stellar converters, I have 4. All right, so I picked up a bunch of basketballs. So I press 5, I've got 4 basketballs, 4 stellar converters. All right, I picked up one Borg ship. Good. It created a new um, slot there. All right. So just press five a bunch, and there it all is. All right. So that's uh, generally how you do it. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, obviously, the thing to do is to uh, you know take all of that data and add it into a menu or some sort of UI widget to show it you know interestingly instead of just like a a printout like I've done here. I ended up picking six board cubes, eight basketballs and five solar converters and um, it all worked um, now this little piece of work here add one item to a stack is pretty similar to what you would do if you wanted to remove an item from a stack so you would just have sort of you know a custom event here you know remove an item it would have a string item to be removed and then you would do a lot of the same stuff you would just compare does the name equal the name of you know one of the structs in my inventory if it does set the count to you know count minus one or set the count to zero um, with the set array element thing right there um, so that's pretty easy and uh, I think that's about it and if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll have my email in the YouTube uh, window there for you. So you can take a look at that and um, ask me any questions, send me any questions. And thanks for watching. All right, bye-bye.